Hey everyone, this is Grant with State of the Spark. I got my trusty uh, gratitude mug here and I'm super excited. Uh, it's Saturday morning, so I'm gonna tone it down a little bit. And no, I don't know if we're gonna do this show. People have been asking, am I gonna do this show every day? Uh, I don't know, am I gonna do this show indefinitely? I don't know. We're really doing this show to stay connected uh, so that you have a pipeline to knowing what State of the Spark is up to and what Spark sites and Spark bookkeeping are doing. Um, but it's also a way for us to just connect and get to know a little bit about each other and maybe even be a little entertained. You know, I see a lot of, uh, I see a lot of zoom calls out there and, uh, it's, it's all educational and you guys know that I'm all about education. If we went to the poster board over here, we'd see educate, encourage, empower, you know, I'm all about education. Um, but I'm also all about connecting and I want to make sure that we're connecting. So again, welcome to the state of the spark. Uh, where spark citizens like you ignite lives of explosive significance. Uh, we focus on goals and gratitude in the Goals and Gratitude group on Facebook. Check that out. So in today, uh, this morning, I'm going to keep this simple. I really want to encourage you that to use your Saturday today to really reset. Because, you know, some of you have been home for weeks now. Some of you have been working remotely for weeks. At least in Florida, we just now got uh, or received our uh, safer at home slash shelter at home order. I love how these things get marketed. Marketing's fantastic at that level. But um, shelter at home order's been, uh, it hasn't even been a full week, I don't think. No, we officially got it Friday. Um, so people are feeling really cooped up because it's been three weeks now that most of us have been following national advice on sheltering and, and keeping physical distance. And, you know, at this point, we've been home for three weeks. Uh, my wife and I uh, do not have the Corona crunk and uh, a lot of people are feeling that. So we want to make sure that you're using this Saturday to reset your mind so that you're fully prepared for a productive week. I know right now there's this fervor. There's this, oh my God, I got to do something productive. And for those with jobs and you're at home, maybe you don't feel that as much. Either you've lost your job or you were furloughed or you're working remotely. And there's a degree of, if you're fur fired or furloughed, there's kind of this thought of, well, we're gonna get the stimulus check at some point, um, or we're gonna get back out in the market at some point, but mortgages are being uh, deferred and taxes are being deferred. And all I gotta do is feed myself. So there's a degree, uh, so from some of the people I've been talking to, there's a slight degree of security and stability. Let's just bunker down. It's kind of like when a hurricane hits in Florida. You can't do anything about it once the storm starts hitting, right? You just got to bunker down. Now, for you small business people, yesterday was a big day. Um, we all were scrambling because we thought we had to rush, rush, rush to get this uh, payroll protection plan up and running, whatever. I'm sick of hearing about it. So to that effect, I've got five quick things in the news that you probably missed because you were thinking. So this is other news. So in completely other news, number one, SpaceX and NASA are preparing their crew for the first private manned space flight. I'm pumped about this. For those of you guys who know me, as a kid, I used to sit on my waterbed that my mom got me and used to float on it and I had this big mural of space. And it was an astronaut. And you could see that astronaut and the, and the space shuttle discovery behind him or her and the curve of the planet Earth. And I floated on my waterbed like I was floating in space and I loved it. So SpaceX and NASA are preparing uh, a crew for the first private space flight. That's number one. Number two, NASA is putting a helicopter, a helicopter drone on Mars. This is crazy. So we've got these Mars rovers and we've had these Mars rovers for years. And they've been limited based on what they could see and based on where those little tires could drive them on the Martian terrain. This is super exciting. They're gonna learn a lot about Mars by putting a helicopter drone. They're gonna learn about density of atmosphere. They're gonna learn a lot about gravity. They're going to learn a lot about wind patterns. So I'm super pumped to know that NASA is putting a helicopter drone on Mars. That's awesome. Third thing, which is mind-blowing, the upper crust of the earth is shaking less. <laughs> what is that? The upper crust of the earth is shaking less because there are billions and billions of less humans driving and walking. And apparently the resonance of the driving and the walking shakes the earth's crust. That's mind blowing. So that's the third thing. The fourth thing is there is a 90 million year old frozen forest being revealed be below the Arctic ice sheet 
as uh, global warming happens and the ice is receding, we're finding a 90 million year old forest. I wonder what we're going to find in there. I wonder what pathogens or plants or, or bones or what we're going to find. It's probably going to be mind blowing and it's probably going to be history shattering, you know? And then of course I can imagine the conspiracy theorists are going to go like, that's what the Corona was all about. We're going to find aliens. <laughs> we're going to find aliens. And the coronavirus is to distract us from discovering aliens under the Arctic ice sheet. <laughs> I hear you, conspiracy theorist. I appreciate you. And the last but not least is some reason this game, Animal Crossing, is taking over. I don't know what it is. I haven't fired it up. But the animal lovers around me, the pet sitters and the, and the mobile dog groomers are playing this game. Uh, Animal Crossing, and apparently there's a social component. They're having a blast. So that's a five quick things in the news that are completely other than the corona um, that you might have missed in the news. So a quick Saturday realignment, my super friends. It's Saturday. You've been rushing around. I'm going to put on my DJ voice. I'm going to ask you to calm down and breathe. <sighs> breathe. It's Saturday. I want you to give yourself permission to read. Now, some of you might have kids at home. You might have responsibilities. I hear that. Some of you might be working. I hear that. But for those of you who can actually take a Saturday, I give you permission to read. I don't care what it is. Of course, I want you to read nonfiction to, for personal development. You know our three brand promises are educate, encourage, and empower. I want you to read. But it doesn't have to be nonfiction. If you've got your favorite fiction book, take half an hour and read. And I recommend an hour because I don't believe it's not until you get about an hour's worth of reading that you finally uh, mentally gain the benefits of that. Number two, a little micro project will take you less than 12 minutes. I want you to practice the Wim Hof breathing method. You can Google it on YouTube or I'll put a link in the show notes. Find Wim Hof breathing method and learn how to breathe. And he does several types, but one of them is box breathing. <sighs> this is different than meditation. This is actually hyperoxygenation. And it has, I believe, an even more powerful effect than meditation. It, it, we've been recommending everyone, instead of smoke breaks or instead of coffee breaks in the afternoon, take a meditation break, you know? If Derek's watching out there, take a meditation break, bro. But Wim Hof breathing also does something. It hyperoxygenates, and you'll come out of that as if you had taken a nap. Try it. That's the second thing I want you to do for your Saturday realignment. Give yourself permission to read and practice Wim Hof breathing. Then what I want you to do is once you've got that, then you have your coffee or your breakfast or whatever fresh air, get some fresh air and plan next week from a clear blue, th blue sky thinking. Marissa was doing her due diligence. She was writing on her notes on her desk over here, the top things she needs to accomplish next week, and she was doing that. Why does she do that on a Friday afternoon? So she can fully check out. For you small business owners who I love and I'm passionate about, for you to fully be able to check out, I want you to capture all the open loops. If you have a squirrel brain right now, if your brain is going a mile a minute, chances are it's your brain does a, 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 a function. And if there's something important, your brain creates a loop until that thing is accomplished, and that's what's known as an open loop. You need to close open loops. The main way to close open loops is to write them down. So if you need sticky notes, pull out your sticky notes, capture those open thoughts, drill them down, lay it on your desk, and walk away. If you use OneNote or Google Keep, it kind of has the same effect, not really, but it can't, I have experimented with this and I've talked to many people, the open loops do not close with digital note taking nearly as much as physical. Even if it's a sheet of paper, get a sheet of paper, get an old notebook and write down things. And your brain is associated with physical three-dimensional space. And when you write down those things in three dimensions and capture them and leave them on your desk, even leave that notebook open. And if you want to come back to it later, great, but write those down then breathe or give yourself permission to read. And the last thing I want you to do is once you've relaxed, once you started feeling good and hanging out, maybe had a drink or maybe spent time with your spouse, I want you to visualize how your week goes next week. Just visualize, not the stress. Visualize the ideal week. And there's got to be some realism here, right? 
are they going to let it, uh, or just because of your visual visualization and you're visualizing that they let us go back to work and let life happen. Uh, does that mean that's going to happen for you? Not necessarily. So to add some realism, if you have to work from home, if you can't go out, if you lost your job and you're working around the house, if you've had to close your business, I talked to one guy, James Barry, he had to close his business, got a job, no disrespect in that. That guy had to do what it takes. I want people like you guys to be out there and visualize a week going as positively as possible given the facts. And I want you to focus on your attitude. How do you act? How do you act in the most positive, abundant way? How do you interface with people? How do you shut down the haters by ignoring them or overlooking them and adding a positive comment? I want you to visualize that. Just 15 minutes. Let yourself reset and then give yourself something productive to do. So that's what I wanted to share with you on a Saturday realignment. Knock those things out. Give yourself permission to read. Practice the Wim Hof breathing. Less than 10 minutes, less than 12 minutes. Plan your next week clearly. Capture those open loops physically somewhere and close those, those story loops. You didn't close the to-do. The loops are about whether or not this thing is going to get forgotten. The loop is not about whether uh, scientifically, neurochemically, when you have an open loop, it is not because you accomplish it or don't accomplish it. It's because it's out of your brain and you'll remember it or not. That's where open loops come from. So if you just capture it in a system that you know you'll get to, your brain will release that thing. And then the fourth thing, visualize who you want to be, the character traits you want next week. All right, last, last tidbit and I'll let you guys go. This is a thought tool. What I was reading today, so I study mental models all the time. The more mental tools you can have and can pull from, the more ways and modalities you can think. This pulls from the thought tool known as optionality. So that's another thought tool. So this thought tool is known, it's an economic thought tool and it's called creative destruction. You might've heard armchair business people use this term casually, but this is a very defined mental model. It's creative destruction brought forth by economist Joseph Schumpeter. Uh, Schumpeter. I'm probably saying his name wrong, Schumpeter. I've always said his name that way. It's based on free market one-upsmanship. In a free market, two people who are completely free to compete. One of them wants to get ahead. And so you've got here, Edison and Tesla. Tesla comes up with the light bulb or the radio, you know, Edison comes along, captures those ideas, makes them market ready, and actually markets the thing, right? Tesla moves on to something else. When Tesla moved on to something else, A, he was a creative, creative guy, always looking for new frontiers, but there was no purpose for him to compete. So he did a creative destruction when he let go of one project or creatively destroyed it or put his creative energies on something else, and that thing he was working on gets destroyed. Now, how this could look, uh, in a small business. So basically, the idea is free market one-upsmanship. When you perceive a competitor doing something better than you, you want to compete with them, so you'll get better than them, and inevitably, something else gets left behind. Usually, in terms of evolutionary psychology, it's the least efficient thing. So if you were raking yards, and your competitor started raking yards with a bigger rake or with uh, a blower, you go, okay, forget raking yards. I'm going to go get a lawnmower, right? Now, you've done this naturally, possibly even unconsciously. You go get a lawnmower. So he had a blower and, a lawn, or, and sees you mowing lawns, and he thinks, well, what, what if I had a, my lawnmower and my blower? So he basically, in that case, what he creatively, he or she creatively destroyed was walking around with a leaf blower, and now he's mowing lawns and having his leaf blower. And that's how markets, that's how innovations happen. It's called creative destruction. So how do you wield this? So Steve Jobs was very aware of creative destruction. And I heard a story, you probably heard the tale that very young, they were working on a computer system, he, him and uh, Wozniak working on a computer system. And I believe they visited, it was either Xerox or IBM. And they saw this room full of computers. And then they saw the GUI, the GUI, the graphic user interface. And they were used to building computers that all had to do with code. But they saw that graphic user interface and they had invested millions in, their, in, their, um, in this next computer rollout. So Steve Jobs comes back to the board and says, we're going to turn directions entirely. We're going to actually be working on a graphic user interface. This is the future. This will help us achieve our goals. This is what we're going to do. And a board member said, Steve, we've invested millions. 
This isn't even a market that people have made for the end user. You're out of your mind. We're going to go out of business. And Steve Jobs says his famous anecdotal response is, it's better we put ourselves out of business than somebody else. The principle is this about your business. And right now, Corona pandemic is forcing people to do either creative destruction or straight up business destruction. If you are not your best competitor, someone else will be. This isn't just about being hard on yourself. A lot of entrepreneurs have a bad rap because a lot of entrepreneurs are in the DISC system, the DISC temperament system. A lot of entrepreneurs are D temperaments or I temperaments or A type people. Uh, that doesn't mean they're the best ones. Hear me on that. CNS temperaments can also be even better entrepreneurs for other reasons. We'll get in that, into that another time. But D temperaments get a bad rap because we're always trying to make things better. We're always trying to optimize. And that frustrates a team, man. D's, D temperaments, D temperamented business owners, hear me on this. That is frustrating your team. And that's okay. But don't be ignorant to it. I frustrated my team yesterday on something. We were optimizing something and one of my team members got frustrated. So I had to follow up with a one-on-one -on -one phone call because it was a group call. And I had to apologize, not for what I was requesting, but apologizing if they felt uncomfortable. And then we talked it through. You always want to make sure that you're apologizing for what you should be apologizing, but you are not apologizing for things you shouldn't be apologizing for. You should never be apologizing if you really believe in your point. You should be apologizing for how you deliver that point sometimes. So creative destruction comes from this desire to always innovate, always make something better. You see that other people have where you're at. You're going to do a free market one-upsmanship. This is a good trait of the entrepreneur and a startup or a startup minded organization or a, you know, you could be a bigger organization and keep that bootstrapping mindset of always innovating. Do it. That is what is known as creative destruction. So how you wield this is be your own best competitor. Have your own critical eye. Assign people on your team who are made, who know, whose skill knows that they are made to implement. They're made to implement what your idea is and to create stability around that thing. But they need to also know that your job is to come and say, we need to make this better. Now, no one necessarily has the trump card. You shouldn't be an authoritarian with this thing. It should be a creative process. But both people have their roles, and that needs to lean into their temperaments. And both parties need to not be judgmental about the other. You need to be abundant-minded and open-minded. So you're, you have to have a culture. How you wield this is to create a culture of conversation. We do this in one major way. We have a weekly huddle. So we have daily huddles, but we have a weekly huddle, and that weekly huddle has a one percenter. And this one percenter is one, ways we're improving each system by one percent. And this compounds. This has made us pretty, pretty – um, uh, competitive, but we actually need to wield this. I think we should be going for 10% changes. Now, if Grant Cardone were here, he'd be like, screw you, man. You need a 10X change. I feel you, bro. I feel you, bro. I hear you, Mr. Grant Cardone. I will get to that 10X change. But in the meantime, week in and week out, you've got to make sure we're at least doing 1% changes and those compound. Okay. That's the thought tool for the day. Uh, Creative Destruction by Joseph Schumpeter. Look it up. Check it out. Listen, if you need support, in any way in your small business, check us out at stateofthespark.com. If you need Corona recovery support, we've created a page for you, stateofthespark.com forward slash Corona hyphen recovery. Check that out. That's got some of the latest and greatest tools from the SBA, some of our latest and greatest tools from our coaching and training, uh, some advice on how to work remotely, on how to sell online and how to stay healthy. We really want you guys to stay healthy. Last but not least, please do not forget, we have our very active Facebook groups, the Goals and Gratitude and Small Business Success, Goals and Gratitude Success Group. It's a, it's a vibrant group of people. We put our best resources there first. You get those access to those first, so check that out. So thank you so much. Remember your mission today. Your mission is to ignite lives of explosive significance starting with your own. So here is to you, igniting your own life of explosive significance. Thanks, have a great day.